Getting the initial customers for your business can be incredibly difficult, especially when you don't know who to sell to, what to say to them, and how to close them. So in this video, I decided to create a fake business and then try to find customers to reach out to and write the email campaigns for them. I'm also gonna show you how to personalize all of these emails so it seems like they were sent by a person and not a robot because we're gonna be sending thousands of them in minutes. All right, so I'm in ChatGPT now and I asked it to give me an idea for a super interesting and quirky B2B business, make it simple yet creative and something that has appeal. And it popped out kind of a B2B business Business. I wouldn't consider many garden kits for offices a B2B business. I would probably say it's more on the B2C route, but regardless, we are going to go with it. So now we are officially selling mini garden kits for your office to increase the aesthetic and air quality of your space. Without further ado, I'm going to write some email copy for this particular use case. And then I'm gonna get back to you with the finished product. Here's my line of thinking. There are two main reasons that somebody would wanna buy flowers for their office. The first one is aesthetic purposes. An office just looks better with plants. The second one is because it will put them more in touch with nature and alleviate some stress that they are experiencing on their day to day. And so I decided to combine those two into my email copy and let's walk through each part of it really quickly. Hey, first name, saw that company name is located in city. Did you know that the state flower in state is a flower name? I'm sure your work as a normalized job title is stressful. Flowers are proven to relax you no matter how many Zoom calls you have that day. Zenron makes flower kits for offices so you can feel more in touch with nature while grinding on your work at the company. Any interest in a free flower match appointment on me? There are four components to this email that are very important and I'm gonna walk you through each one of them. The first one is the intro sentence. The intro sentence is incredibly important because people will not open their emails and they'll send them straight to spam or just open them automatically if you don't have something that's enticing enough for them to read. One way to make an intro really good is to personalize it so it seems like you did your research on them, thus earning their time to read your email. In this case, I decided to use a location-based one and just saying, hey, I saw it's in this city. Did you know that state flower is whatever flower it happens to be? This is a small piece of value that hopefully will in turn get them to read the rest of the email. It's also pretty interesting because why am I talking about flowers in a sales email? So hopefully that works on selling them. The second part of the email is addressing the problem. It's very likely that whoever's working in this job is stressed out and they wanna find a way to alleviate that issue. Flowers are a cheap and easy way to do so. And so I wanted to address it in the sentence by saying, hey, I'm sure your work is stressful. Flowers are proven to relax you. So maybe you should consider buying a flower. Then in the very next line, I say, hey, you know how I just told you you should buy flowers? Well, we provide them for you. Not only do we provide flowers for you, but we provide flower kits specifically for offices, niching down the offer and allowing them to think that we are specialized and differentiated compared to other companies. Last is the offer. If you don't provide them a special offer of some kind or some exchange of value at the end of the email, they're likely not going to respond simply because there's no reason for them to. You have to give them a call to action and you have to give them a reason to respond to your email instead of just ignoring it and considering buying flowers elsewhere. So you can see that although this email is quite short, it has all the elements of a good cold email. And now we can move on to building out the clay table that will allow us to create thousands and thousands of these emails, all with different personalizations and all automated. Okay, so now we're within Clay, which is the tool we're gonna to use to automate all of these emails. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to new table and scroll down to find people from LinkedIn. Now we have to figure out what parameters we wanna to use to find people. We're going to click on job title right here, and then we're going to go to founder, co-founder, and CEO. And those are going to be the three job titles that we look to research. Next, I'm just going to go to their location right here, and I'm going to put in New York and San Francisco. The reason for that is that these are both cities, and cities likely have less nature than other places. And my thought is they're going to be craving a plant more than those that are in a rural area and can just walk outside. Next, because I want to ensure that these people likely have money, we're going to go to education and we are going to type in Harvard, Yale, and Princeton. And we'll do Stanford as well. I'm going to limit the results here to 100 people as I want this to run smoothly so I can just show you for demonstration purposes. We're going to preview the people and just wait a moment and they're going to populate next to us. All right, so now we have 100 people that have loaded up here. They fit all of our criteria perfectly and we're going to import them into our clay table. All right, so after importing all of our founders and co-founders and CEOs into our clay table, you can see here that we have a couple pieces of information that automatically import. The first one's a company name. We also have the name of the person, their job title, their location, their domain, and the link to their LinkedIn profile. The first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of anybody who doesn't have company domain available. So you can see here, there are a couple of blank spaces and we're not going to be able to find their work email if we don't have their company domain. So we're going to go to filter right here and then just find company domain and make sure the only ones that show are the ones that aren't empty. All right, so now we have 79 people. Next, what we're going to do is create the personalizations for our our email. So as you can see right here, we have the company name. You might think, okay, we already have the name for the company, but it's actually best practice to create a column here and go to add enrichment and then normalize the company name. This is because there are some companies that are long winded and have a lot of things like LLC or incorporated in them. And it makes the email seem like a human isn't writing.
creating them. So we're going to use this company name enrichment to normalize the name of the company. So next we need to find their city and their state. We are going to go to enrich data right here and we're going to type in open, then go to use AI. And I'm going to write a prompt using the blocks of each column that we have to extract the state and the city from each one of these locations. All right, so my prompt is tell me what state this is located in, just print the state, nothing else. So it uses this block to analyze this for every single one of these rows individually and print it out into a column. All right, so the next step is just getting the city, pretty much doing the same thing. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. We're gonna run this integration and then we're gonna move on to the next personalization. All right, so now that this is finished, we can now find the state flower for each one of these cities. We are going to use AI again, and here is the prompt. So the prompt is pretty simple once again. It's just giving the state flower for the state, print just the name of the flower and nothing else. You know what? Halfway through building this out, I decided this is too boring. So I'm gonna add some spice to it. What I decided to do here was add a little PS at the end of the prompt and say, here's a picture of what it could look like in your office. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a custom image with that flower in an office within New York or San Francisco, and we're gonna send it to them. And it's going to show another deeper level of personalization that is likely not achieved in most cold emails. Clay actually has an integration called Generate Image. And what it allows us to do is create a custom AI generated image using Dolly based on a certain prompt. So we are going to just give this a shot and create ourselves an image for every one of these people. All right, so now I wrote state flower response in a beautiful office in the city. The flower is vibrant, beautiful, and makes the office look way better. And so let's give it a shot and see if it can print out an image for us. All right, so we've got some results here. Let's see what it looks like. It's not great, but you know what? It's good enough for example's sake. A little bit of prompt tweaking would probably make it seem a little bit better, but nonetheless, let's go with it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is find the emails for each one of these prospects. In order to do that, we click add column and then add enrichment. And you'll see right here that there is a work email data point. We're gonna click on that. And then we're going to use this waterfall of email providers to find the email for each one of these prospects. All you have to do is input the full name and the domain, which this one auto mapped already. And then we're just going to run all of our rows. All right, and now we have the emails for a majority of the decision makers. So after we filter out the ones that didn't include emails, we are going to download this as a CSV and use it for our campaign. So you can see here that we have 68 validated emails with all of our enrichments run. So what we're gonna do next is just click export and download view as CSV. All right, so I'm instantly now, which is my email tool of choice, and I am going to name this flower campaign. After that, all I have to do is click add leads, upload CSV, and I'm going to download the CSV that we just got from Clay. Next, what I'm gonna do is map out all the variables required in order to create this email inside of instantly. All right, so now that everything is mapped out, we are going to upload this to our campaign and then paste in our copy. Let's look at an example of what this email will look like for a prospect. Hey Alex, a solid poet network is located in New York. Did you know that the state flower of New York is a rose? I'm sure that your work as a co-founder is stressful. Flowers are proven to relax you no matter how many Zoom calls you have that day. Senron makes flower kits for offices so you can feel much more in touch with nature while grinding on your work at Poet Network. Any interest in a free flower match appointment on me? And then here is a picture and I linked it right here of what you could look like in your office. I actually wouldn't recommend linking it. I would recommend embedding it. Regardless, it is a really cool way to personalize some of your outreach with a custom picture. All right, and that is it. Hopefully one of you owns a desk flower company and you can use this exact script. Otherwise, I hope you still found some value based on the copy. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and see you later.